everyone, uh, Mrs. Van Kole, and uh, we are having mathematics now. So this topic is indices. But before we move ahead, you will see that the temperature of the sun to the earth is about 15 million Celsius. This is the earth. This is the earth, and you can see the sun. The distance. Though it's on the cardboard, so it's very small, is 15 million sensors. While that of stars, the stars you see above, the distance is 400, 400 billion. Now, in mathematics, if you want to do the multiplication of, two, of these two numbers, you will find it very, very difficult to do because they are very big and powerful. As a result, we are going to introduce what we call indices. Indices talk about numbers in powers. Numbers in powers. Like this 15 you know, million degree sensor for the sun. For you to change it to indices, you count how many digits you are having. It's in two ways. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight digits. You just take one from it. It will give you seven. So to change this one to indices, you have 1.5 times 10 raised to power seven to indices. Another way of doing it is to say one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You put your point there. So you have 1.5 times 10 raised to power seven. You see that the number has become smaller. To so that of the stars as well, which is 400 billion. If you want to change it to um, indices, you just have 4 times 10 raised to power, count the digits you are having. You have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Take one away from it, it will give you 11. Another way of doing it is to say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Put your points. So you have it in index form. As a result, these two values now, you can easily multiply them. It will be very, very easy for you. So that is all about the introduction of the topic we are going to treat today, which is indices. Now we have lots of indices. Lots of indices. We have seven lots of indices, and they are very, very simple. The first one, when you have a raised to power m times a raised to power n, it will give you a raised to power m plus n. What have we done? The two index values, we're going to add them together. So far, the base are the same. Which means that in law of indices, if you are multiplying, you add the powers. Come to law 2. a raised to power m divided by a raised to power n. This one is talking about division. And when you are dividing in indices, you are going to subtract the powers. So you have m minus n. Then the third law states that a raised to power 0 is equal to 1, which means any value raised to power 0 must give you 1. It can be 1 million raised to power 0, which will still give you 1. But a is not equal to 0. Then come to the fourth rule. You have a raised to power minus n. Now, anywhere you see minus as your power. Minus will change to one over. Add that one at the back of your mind. Anywhere you have minus as your power, minus as raised to power, it will change to one over. Then the rest value, which is a raised to power n. Then for the example five, we have a into brackets, n plus the brackets n. You have two powers here. You have n and you have n. Multiply the two together. It will give you a raised to the power n, n. That is, you multiply the two powers, the one inside the bracket and the one outside the bracket. Come to law six. 
You have every superpower m over n. You see that your power is in fraction. This power is in fraction. Your numerator is m. Your denominator is n. When you have fraction like this, have it at the back of your mind that your fraction will change to root. And when it changes to root, your numerator will go outside the brackets, while your denominator will be your root. If this one is 2 over 3, it means your 2 will go out, and your 3 will be inside the root. Then the last but not the least, if a raised to power m is equal to a raised to power n, so far they have the same base, then you equate the powers, which are m is equal to n. So these are the laws of indices, and we need to apply them in solving some problems. For us to do this, let's go to our examples. For number one, we have 36 raised to the power 1 over 2 times 64 raised to the power minus 1 over 2 times 5 raised to the power 0. Now, if you look at this 36 raised to the power 1 over 2, 1 over 2 is a fraction. Fraction, as I told you, in law 6, we change to root. So our fraction here has changed to root. So we have root 36. The 1 will be outside, the 2 will be here. I didn't put 2 here because this shape is already for square root. But let's say this place is 3. Definitely, you are going to write your 3 in this place. Times, can you see this one? Minus. I told you the other time that anywhere you're having minus, your minus will change to 1 over. So you have 1 over. Then this 1 over 2 is a fraction. We change to root 64. Times any value raised to power 0 must give you 1. So the square root of 36 will give you 6. Square root of 64 will give you 8 times 1. Multiply the numerators together, you have 6. Divide it by 8. And look for the number that can divide 6 and 8. The number is 2. So, 2 here, sorry, you have 3. And 2 here, you have 4. So you have 3 over 5 is your final answer. Come to example 2. Example 2 is like law 5. You have a value inside the bracket. You have outside the bracket. So you multiply the two values together, and that will give us 2 over 3. 2 over 3 is a fraction. Change your fraction to root. And when you change it to root, remember that your numerator will go out, and your denominator will come outside. Which means that you are going to find the cube root of 27. The number you are going to multiply twice, three times, that will give you 27. And that number is 3. So we have 3 times 3 times 3. It will give you 27. So that's why you have 3 raised to the power of these 2. And 3 is the power 2 means 3 times 3, which will give you 9. Okay? For example, 3. We have simplified 0 0.027 raised to the power minus 1 over 2. And at the back of your mind, that this minus we change to 1 over. And 1 over 3, we change to root because it's a fraction. And when it changes to root, I told you, the numerator will go out, denominator, which is 3, will come here. You now think of two numbers. The number you're going to multiply three times, that will give you 0 0.027, and the number is 0 0.3. Now, I want you to know that 0 0.3 is still the same thing as 3 over 10. And this one is 1 divided by 0 0.3. So it means 1 divided by 3 over 10. And that is what you have here, 1 divided by 3 over 10. So your division will change to multiplication, and when it changes, it becomes 10 over 3. You multiply, that's 10 over 3, divide it, you have 3 whole number, 1 over 3. For example, 4, we have if 9 raised to the power 2x plus 1 is equal to 81 raised to the power x minus 2 over 3 raised to the power x, find x. The first thing to do here is to cross multiply. We are cross multiplying because we have is equal to we have is equal to here. And when you cross multiply, this 81 raised to the power x minus 1, we stay alone. Why not raised to the power 2x plus 1? We multiply 3 raised to the power x. Now, we are going to break this 81. Okay, it's like exponential. So we break it. So when we break this 81, you think of the number you are going to multiply that can give you 81. Multiples of that number. So we have 3. 3 raised to the power 4, we give you 81. Into brackets, x minus 2. Break now again, it will give you 3 raised to power 2 into bracket 2x plus 1. Then we have 3 raised to power x. You open the brackets and that will give us 4x minus 8 is equal to 4x, 2 times 1, 2. Now, this is base 3, base 3, base 3. Collect the parts together. So we have 4x minus 8 
is equal to 4x plus 2 plus this x. We are adding plus x because this one is what? Multiplication. We collect the like terms. We have 4x. Take this 4x. Okay, we added up this one together. That should give us 5x. We now collected the, le me, the like terms. This 5x will come to the left hand side, we change to minus 5x. Then you bring minus 8 to the right hand side, we change to plus 8. Add the two values together, you have 10. Subtract only 5 naira, you pay 4 naira, you are still in x. In order to eradicate this minus, you multiply both sides by minus. So multiply this one by minus, we give you x. Then multiply this one by minus, we give you minus 10. For example, for we have, if 9 raised to the power 1 minus x is equal to 27y, and uh, x minus y is equal to minus 1, or oh, number 1 over 2, find the values of x plus y. What are we going to do in this place? Try to write them separately. The first value is 9 raised to the power 1 minus x is equal to 27 raised to the power y. And the second value is x minus y is equal to minus 1 or number 1 over 2. Now, you are going to break this 9, just like the example we did in number 4. So you break 9 to give you 3 raised to the power 2. Then, 1 minus x. Break 27, that will give you 3 raised to the power 3. Multiply by y, you have this. We now open the bracket. You have 3 raised to the power 2 minus 2x. 3 raised to power is equal to 3 raised to power 3y. Therefore, this value here, you still have your x minus y is equal to, change, this one is a mixed fraction. Change it to an improper fraction. It will give you minus 3 over 2. Now, having done that, you have base 3 here. You have base 3 here. You can cut it up. Make use of the powers, which are 2 minus 2x is equal to 3y. Therefore, this one, you cross multiply. Okay? So we multiply x minus y, and that will give us 2x minus 2y is equal to minus 3. As a result, you are going to still collect the light times. It's forming a simultaneous equation, but it's not yet correct because they are not well arranged. This one is 2, this is 2x, 2x, 2y, 3y, not well arranged. So we need to rearrange them. So we have this minus 2x here, this minus 3y, we come to the um, left and side. Try to collect the light and the variables, you know, to the left and the constant to the right. Then the second value, we have 2x minus 2y is equal to minus 3. We want to eliminate this minus. So to eliminate this minus, you multiply 2 by minus. Minus times minus will give you plus. Minus times minus will give you plus. Minus times minus will give you plus. So that has given us equation 1 and equation 2. Now, using elimination method, in equation 2, so far you have 2x, 2x here. You are, you know, it is very, very easy for you to do what? To manipulate. So far you have 2x, 2x here. All the values you having for equation 2, just change the sign. So this 2x will give you minus 2x. This minus 2y will give you plus 2y. This minus 3 will give you plus 3. So you add up. 2 plus 3 will give you 5. 3y plus 2y will give you 5y. Remember, I want to make y the variable. And that will give us y is equal to 5 over 5. And that will give us 1. Now, we need to get x. For us to get x, you go back to your equation 1 or equation 2, any one you like. Let's say equation 1. You say from equation 1. Our equation 1 is 2x plus 3y is equal to 2. Which means that we are going to substitute y in equation 1. And that will give us 2x plus 3, 1 is equal to 2. That will give us 2x plus 3 is equal to 2. So 2x will give us 2. Take this plus 3 to the right hand side. We change to minus 3. So we have which implies 2x is equal to minus 1. Which implies that x is equal to minus 1 over 2. That is divided both sides by the coefficient of x, which is 2. So our x is minus 1 over 2. But the question says we should have x plus y. So for x plus y, our x minus 1 over 2 plus our y, 1. We can find the LCM, which is 2. So 2 will go into 1. Multiply by this, we have minus 1 plus 1 here, we give us 2 times this. So 2 minus 1, we give us 1 over 2. So that is the um, solution to question 5. We now go to question 6. Now, to example 6, we have 2 raised to the power 2x plus 1 minus 9 to bracket 2 raised to the power x plus 4 is equal to 0. If you look at this value, it's still in exercise. You are going to separate. You pick it one by one. You say 2 raised to the power 2x 
Multiply. This dot means multiplication. Multiply by 2 raised to power 1. Minus 9 raised to power into bracket 2 raised to power x. Close the bracket plus 4. Now, remember we've separated this. If you try to remove this dot to multiply together, it's still going to give you 2 raised to power 2x plus 1. At this junction, we are going to represent 2 raised to power x, you know, with letter P. If you like, you can use letter M or letter N, any letter that you want, okay? So, anywhere you see 2 raised to power x, all you just need to do is to put P. And this one is 2 raised to power 2x. Remember, we said 2 raised to power x. Let's try to cover this one. You have your 2 raised to power x, which is P. But because of this square, you have P squared. Dot, 2 raised to power 1, we give you 2. Minus 9, 2 raised to power x, we give you P. That's our representation here, right? Plus 4 is equal to 0. So multiply these two together, that will give us 2P squared minus 9P plus 4. This is a quadratic equation. And in this quadratic equation, you have a coefficient of P squared. And the first thing to do here is to multiply the coefficient of P squared by the constant, which is 4. So 2 times 4 will give us 8. We now think of two numbers that when we multiply together, we are going to have 8. And when we have together, we are going to have minus 9. Now, if you say 2 times 4, it will give you 8. If you say 8 times 1, it will give you 8. But we are going to think of the one, we are going to pick that at the end of the day, if we add together, it will give you minus 9. Now, if you put minus here and you put minus there, minus 8 minus 1, you are owing 8 naira, you are owing 1 naira, altogether you are owing 9 naira. So we go for minus 8 minus 1. And if you multiply, minus times minus, we give us plus. 8 times 1, we give us 8. You have our 8 back. That is why we are removing minus 9p and we are substituting it with minus 8p minus p because of these two values that we got here. Now, we try to factorize. 2 can go here, 2 can go here. You bring it out. P can go here, P can go here. We bring it out. So we are left with 2p in 2p squared. It remains p. Then 2 in 4. I mean, sorry, 2 in 8 will give us 4. P will go in P. This minus is this. What is common between P and the plus 4 is 1. So we are still going to have P minus 4. The question you ask me is, that, excuse me, ma, this place is plus. Why is it becoming minus? It is going to be minus because minus, that is here, times this minus will give you plus. So we have P minus 4, P minus 4. We are going to pick 1. So we have P minus 4. Then the one outside the bracket. You join them together is equal to zero you not separate you say p minus four is equal to zero or two p minus one is equal to zero so p is equal to transfer this minus four to the right hand side we change to plus four then two p is equal to transfer this minus one to the right hand side we change to plus one divide side by two and that will give you p is equal to one over two that is phase one of it the phase two is that i want you to recall from this place that your p is equal to 2 raised to power x. P is, P is equal to 2 raised to power x. And remember that the first answer we got here for P was 4. So you put 4 on the P is equal to 2 raised to power x. 4, if you break it, it will give you 2 raised to power 2 is equal to 2 raised to power x. So when you're having the same base, then your x is equal to 2. You do the same thing for the second one. Recall, P is equal to 2 raised to power x. Then, your P is 1 over 2. Write P there. Write 1 over 2 on the P. Is equal to 2 raised to power X. When you change this one, it will give you 2 raised to power minus 1 in indices. Remember I told you the other time that if you have minus as your power, it become 1 over. Okay? So 1 over 2 is the same thing as 2 raised to power minus 1. 2, 2, the same base. So you are left with the powers. Minus 1 is equal to a Therefore, our X is equal to minus 1. And that is all about the sample I mean, example on indices. We also have rules of logarithms. As we've had it in indices, so also we have it in logarithms, and they are similar. Now, for rules of logarithms, log A into bracket, you know, log into bracket PQ base A is the same thing as log P base A plus log Q base A. What are we saying? Under the rules of logarithm, when we are multiplying, what do we do? We had. You try to separate, then we had. And in logarithm as well, when you are dividing log P 
P over Q, P divided by Q base A. In, in division, you are going to subtract. So you have log P base A minus log Q base A. Then root 3 says, when you have log P raised to, raised to power X is equal to A, this raised to power X will come in front of log, and that will give us X log P base A. Any number you are adding as your power A, you have to bring it to the front. Then you repeat what you have here. Then root 4 says, if log A base A is equal to X, then your base now, you shall be the head and not the tail. So, this is the tail, okay? We now become the head, which is A raised to power X is equal to M. Then we have log A base A. When you have log A base A, it should give you 1. It's just that like when you have log 10 base 10, it should give you 1. But when you have log 100 base 10, that will give you 2. If you have log 1000 base 10, we give you 3 and so on like that. Then log 1 base A will give you 0. These are the rules for log readings as we had an emphasis and we have some examples for that. For example, when we have to evaluate log 6 base 10 plus log 45 base 10 minus log 27 base 10, we start using logarithm table, right? For us to do this, we are going to multiply. What are we going to multiply? We are multiplying because we have plus. Remember that in this place, when we have plus, we multiply the two values together. And uh, when we have minus, what do we do? When we have minus, what do we do? We divide. So that's why we have 6 times 45 divided by 27. Okay? You now look for the value that can cut 45 and 27, which is uh, 9. 9 here will give you 5. 9 here will give you 3. 6 times 5 will give you 30, divided by 3, and that will give us 10. And remember what I said the other time, log 10 this day will give you 1. For example, 2, we have to simplify log root 27 over log 81. Try to break this 27. It will give you log 3 raised to power 3. That is the number you can multiply twice that can give you 27. That's 3 raised to power 3. And when you break this one also, it will give you 3 raised to power 4. And that's what we're having here. Log 3 raised to power 3 is equal to log 3 raised to power 4. And I told you that when you have, look at your rule 3. When you have your power here, your power will come to the front. So you are having power there as well. Log 3, the, log 3 raised to power 3. So your 3 will come to the front. So you have 3 log 3. 4 will come to the front. 4 log, 4 log you know, 3. Then log 3 will cancel log 3. You have 3 over 4. So example 3 we have, if log 2, this log 2, okay, into brackets, 3x minus 1 is equal to 5. We have to find x. We have to find x. So here we have the question here. Remember, this one is just like uh, log 4. Log 4. Log, you know, n base a is equal to x. The tail will become the head. So the tail here is the 2. So it will become the head. 2, the base 2 will become the height, okay? 2, 2, raised to the power, this 5, is equal to what to have there, 3x minus y. Just like when you add, is equal to hem there, right? 2 raised to the power 5 will give you 32, is equal to 3x minus 1. Try to collect the like times. Bring your minus, so this will change to plus. How the 2 together, you have 33 divided, is equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3. That will give you x equal to 3 over 3, and that will give you 11. So that is example 3. We move to example 4 now. Thank you. Okay, let's move to example 4 now. The question says, we start using mathematical tables, which will find x, given that 6 log into brackets, x plus 4, close the brackets, is equal to 6 to 4, right? Now, they want us to find the value of x, and I want you to recall that this 6 that is here will be raised to power 6. It's part of the law that I gave you the other time is equal to log 64. So we take the antilog of both sides. We have a log here, we have a log here. When you take the antilog of both sides, the log we cancel, so we have x plus 4 raised to the power 6 is equal to 64. You now try to break this 64, which will give us 2 raised to the power 6. Actually, this 64, when you break it, can also give you 8 raised to the power 2. But we cannot use 8 raised to the power 2 because we have something like 6 here. So we look for the same value that will give us the same power. As a result, we are going to use 2 raised to the power 6. And so far, we have the same powers on both sides. You just evaluate the base, which is x plus 2 
x plus 4 is equal to 2. So our x now will give us 2. You transfer this plus 4 to the right hand side and that will give you minus 4. 2 minus 4 will give you minus 2. For example 5 we have if log 2x plus 1 in bracket base 10 minus log into bracket 3x minus 2 base 10 is equal to 1. You should also find the value of x. Now remember log 2 that I gave to you. Log 2 says that when we are subtracting, what do we do? We divide. So I'm going to divide log this log 10, this log 10, we pick one log 10. Then you have 2x plus 1 divided by 3x minus 2. Assuming it is multiplication that is here, then it will be plus. We use addition is equal to 1. Now, remember what I told you the other time, that log 10 base 10, we always give us 1. So this one also, we can substitute it towards to 10. And we now cross multiply. When we cross multiply, your 10, we multiply your denominator is equal to the numerator. Try to open the bracket, and that will give us 30x minus 20 is equal to 2x plus 1. You collect the like terms. You bring your 2x to the left-hand side, which change to minus. And when we subtract, that will give us 28. Add together, we have 21. Divide both sides by 28. That will give us 21 over 28. Divide it by 7, and that will give us 3 over 4. Then the last example for this law of logarithm says simplify without uh, using mathematical tables. Log 30 over 16 base 10 minus 2 log 5 over 9 base 10 plus log 400 2, 4, divided by 243 base 10. I want you to recall that the 2 that is here will be raised to power. Any value you find in front of log will always be the exponential, will be the power. Then after that, anywhere you are seeing minus, you change it to what? Division. And anywhere you see plus, you change it to multiplication. And you remember in mathematics, when you have division, you want to change it to multiplication. Denominator will go up, numerator will come down. Then we multiply by this. You now look for the value that can divide each other. We divide all these values. At the end of the day, you have 10. And log 10 is 10. We always give us 1. So that is about theory um, of logarithm. We can now go to another aspect of logarithm, but that one is dealing with tables. That is four figure table. Four figure table. For example, one we have 3.68 raised to the power 2 times 6.705 over the root of 0 0.3581. We have some principles here. Okay? Now, the first value here is 3.68. You need to get the. Um, we have uh, Mantissa and we have characteristics okay so for us to get the characteristics of this one this one is one digit and one minus one we give us zero but let's assume we have 36.8 the characteristics should be one po one point we have two digits two minus one we give you one or you count it like this one you put your point let's say it is three six eight what will be the characteristics one two three minus one characteristics will be two points and so on like that. So our characteristic will be zero because one minus one we give you zero. You now check your four figure table. For a four figure table, we have log logarithm of numbers. That should be page two on your four figure table. Okay. There you have x, the values under it, we have zero, one, up to nine. Then we have differences. So to check it, just go to log thirty-six. This log thirty-six. Under 8, you trace it forward. Trace it forward. That will give you 5, 6, 5, 8. And that's what you're having here. 5, 6, 5, 8. And remember, it is raised to power 2, which means we're going to multiply it by 2. In logarithm, when you have raised to power 2, that will give you times 2. If you multiply it by 2, you have 1.1316. Then consider the, the right-hand side value, which is 6. 705. We need to get the characteristic. How many digits do you have here before the decimal point? You have one. One minus one will give you zero. Let's say it is six seven zero five. What will be the characteristic? It will be three. One, two, three, four. Minus one will give you three. Or one, two, three. So that's how to get your characteristic. You now also check 67. You check 67 under zero, difference five. This 67 under zero. This on that zero. Difference five. You still move it a little bit. When you have difference, you say, move it, move it, move it until you get to five. You get to five, you have three here. You now add the three 
to 8 to 6, 1. And that will give us 8 to 6. So we have that value. We now add up. What are we adding? What are we adding? We are adding because this one is multiplication. So what we had, we have 1.9580. We're done with the numerator. So the answer for our numerator is 1.9580. We now go to the denominator. For denominator, inside the root, we have 0 0.3581. Now you will look at this one. That the first digit here is 0 point. In log day, when you have 0 point, count the number of zeros and put the ball on it. That will be your characteristic. Here we have one zero. You have bar one. Assuming we have 0 0.00. 3581 that will be bar 3. If it is 0 0.03581 be bar 2. So that will give you a characteristic. Okay, you now check 85 under 8 difference 1 from your four figure table. You have this value. Now this root we call it square root. It means we are going to divide by 2. Assuming it's fourth root, it means we are going to divide it by 4. Now, how do you divide by 2? 2 cannot go in bar 1. You are not going to look for the smallest number. You will add to this bar 1 and 2 will go there straight. The number you can add to this bar 1 and 2 will divide and that value is 1. So when you put 1 here, you assume that this bar 1 will become what? Bar 2. Plus that 1 again, 1 1.5540. Now, as we have bar 3.5540 divided by 2. Actually, 2 can go, but it will remain. And two, we just go there straight. And that number again is one. When you put the one there, you have about four. So two can go in about four straight. Then plus that one again, point five five four zero. So when we divide two in bar two, that will give us bar one. Two in fifteen. Don't say two in one. No, two in fifteen straight. You have seven. Remainder one in fifteen again seven. Remainder one in fourteen seven. Okay. So the answer for our denominator is bar one point seven seven zero. Now, for our numerator and our denominator, our numerator, our denominator, we have division. And when we are dividing, what do we do? We subtract. So when you subtract, you have zero. This will give us one. This will give us five. I mean, five minus seven is not possible. So we take one from this place. We give you 15. Seven from 15. Seven from 15, we give you eight. This one remains what? Eight. Seven from eight, we give you one. Now, listen. This one is one minus minus one so we have one plus one and that will give us two that's not our final answer we now move to our antilog antilog is on the um, second page after logarithm of number we see antilog of numbers now when you want to check your antilog you are going to cover the characteristic here just check only the Manchester which is 18.1 so on your four figure table you look for 18 okay Point one that is under one, and that is 1517. That's what you're having here. 1517. Now, this one that you have covered, remove your hand. Look at the number. What is the number? Two. You had one to the two, and that will give you three. You now count one, two, three, and you put your point. Now, let's assume you have 1.1810. You still check your four figure table 18 under one. That will give you 1517. This one is one. You had one to that one, that will give you two. One, two. So your answer will be 15.17. But the question is, let's say you have seven. Point one, eight, one, zero. You still add one to this seven, that will give you eight. But in this place, you have four values, four digits. So to have eight digits, you are going to add four zeros. Now, look at example two. The first value here is 15.05. How many digits here do you, do you have? You have two digits. Two minus one, that will give you one. Just like this one, you have one digit, one minus one, zero. You now check from your four figure to be 15 under zero, difference five, and that will give us 1.1775. 1 Look at the second part of it. You have the root of 0 0.0695. I told you that the number of zeros here will determine your characteristics. Just put bar on top. So this one is three zero, that's bar three. If it is five zeros, it will be bar five. From your four figure to be 69.5, we give you 8420. Now, look at it, is that new root? And the root means you are going to divide by 2. Actually, 2 can go in by 3, but it will remain. We don't want any remainder. As a result, look for the smallest value. You will add to this by 3. That 2 will just go there straight, and that value is 1. So when you put 1 here, that will give you by 4. Plus that 1 again, 
0.842, so we cannot divide. So two cannot go there straight without any remainder. You say two in 18, not two in one. That will give you nine. Two in four, two in one, zero. That is for the numerator. So the answer for our numerator, we have this one point, the first part, 1.1775. The second part, you have about 2.9210. In between, division. And when we are multiplying in logarithm, what do we do? We add. So we add up. And that will give us 5. This will give us 8. This will give us 9. This will give us 10. You write 0. Carry 1. Plus this 1. Plus what you have here? Minus 2. So 1 plus 1, 2 minus 2. And that will give us 0. Come to your denominator. This one is like standard form, right? Anything you have here as your power, 10 raised to power 2, that will be your characteristics. If it is 10 raised to power minus 2, it means your characteristics will be minus 2. You now check as usual, 69 under 5, and that is 8420. Okay? Now, there is a line in between the numerator and denomination. Denominator. The line is division. And in logarithm, division we change to subtraction. Oh, yeah? Let's subtract. That will give us 5, 6, 5. You cannot take 8 from 0. You need to borrow from this zero. And when you are borrowing from this zero, you put it here. That will give you 10. 8 from 10 will give you 2. Because you are borrowing from this zero, this zero will change to bar 1. That is it. If it is bar 1 that is there, and you want to borrow from this bar 1 to this place, this bar 1 will change to bar 2. If it is bar 5 that is there, you want to borrow from it to this place. This bar 5, we change to bar 6. So we have bar 1, that is minus 1, minus, what you have here? 2. That's minus 1, minus 2. Only 1 error, only 2 error, all together you are only 3 error. So our antelope 25, remember you close this place. 25 under 6, difference 5, we give us 1805. Now, when you remove your hand, this is bar 3, which means that at the end of the day, you are going to have the three zeros. 0, 0.00, then you repeat your hand till long. If it is by 5.2565, it means you are going to have 5 zero. That's 0. 0.00001805. So I believe with this, uh, you should be able to solve some questions. I would like to give you um, some do it yourself. So you have this first question. You have this first questions. Try to solve it yourself. Okay. The values inside the brackets here, they are the answers. Don't do wuru wuru to the answer. Try to solve it according to the rules that I've given you. And uh, you'll be happy when you get your answer. Thank you very much.